Howdy, everybody. We're going to take a look today at guitars that were used in Southern rock music and that influenced the genre of Southern rock. We're going to take a look at them and uh, take a little drive through and a little test drive of each one. Hey, y'all, this is Chris Hicks, and welcome to the Southern Rock Insider. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe and click the notification bell. It's time to rock Southern style. The Southern Rock Insider. So the first guitar we're going to take a look at today is the Gibson Les Paul. Easily the number one of uh, Southern rock and, and lots of other styles, really. Um, named after Les Paul and uh, started in the 50s, I guess. They changed it very little through the years until they come to this version, which is a 50s reissue. But Gibson Les Paul would be responsible for lots of sounds, including... <laughs> be one of them of course but Les Paul was used a lot because of his big chunky tone and and just the way it looks and feels I mean that's that's your rock and roll guitar Jimmy Page um, gosh everybody else in the world played Les Paul especially during that time <laughs> Nicky Best, Dwayne Allman, they played Les Pauls. Tor Caldwell played with 59 Les Paul in his early days. And uh, Billy Gibbons plays his Les Paul. Chris Hicks plays a Les Paul. <laughs> Barry Bailey from the Atlanta Rhythm Section plays a Les Paul. <laughs> Anyhow, lots of people do Les Pauls, and this, this is why. You get this nice smooth tone on your front pickup. And you reach down to the back pickup. You get a more bite. trustworthy guitar in any kind of music, southern rock or not. Les Paul's hard to beat. It really is. He's just hard to beat because of the balance of it, I guess, and, and the two humbucker pickups. It's just a classic tone for any kind of music. You could even play light jazz on Les Paul for the guitar. Got somebody. Gary Rossington, his nice snarly Les Paul tone. This is his 58 Les Paul he uses. <laughs> Gets a nice snarly dark tone with his, you know. Give me back my bullets. Billy Jones, he sure did. Billy Jones was always on a Les Paul. He played the black Les Paul custom with three pickups in it. It was his kind of signature. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sure did. He always played a Gibson Les Paul. Every time I ever saw him. Okay, for our number two, we're going to look at the Fender Stratocaster. Leo Fender's design from the 50s as well. Uh, a great rock and roll guitar, great blues guitar. Eric uh, Clapton always plays a Strat. Uh, lots of people are known for their Strats. Richie Blackmore plays a Strat all the time. Jeff Beck plays a Strat all the time, pretty much. Uh, lots of other people, but you might remember Ed King doing this. single chord pickup, three single chord pickups that is, it gives it that bitey kind of trebly sound, Fender, uh, Fender unique sound. Stratocaster's been used on a lot of stuff like... You also got the other tone on the Strat, Stevie Ray. Be the front pickup or the front two, mm -hmm. giving it your your darker, more uh, bassy sound down to the 
Back pickups. Through the biting sound. Another Stratocaster song would be. Stratocaster, besides the Les Paul, probably the most two used electric guitars in rock and roll. Not just Southern rock, but rock and roll in general. The Fender Stratocaster and the Gibson Les Paul would be the number one and two of anybody, I would think. Thanks to Les Paul and Leo Fender. All right, number three on our guitar menu here today, Fender Telecaster. Um, worldwide loved guitar by many people. Uh, Waylon Jennings played a Telecaster. Danny Gatton played a Telecaster. Um, lots of other people. Keith Richards usually always plays his old beat up telly. And the telly has a somewhat of a Stratocaster type sound, but a little funkier. A little more uh, chicken picking like. <laughs> the telly's a. Uh, Huey Thomason played a Telecaster about four of the five years, four or five years that I played with him. He played a Telecaster all the time. And he switched back to a Strat. He had the heaviest Telecaster still I've ever held. It was heavy, man. It had a B bender in it. But the thing was just really heavy. And, uh, but the Telecaster gives you some other Fender tones you can, that you don't usually get out of a Strat. Yeah, Steve Morse played a Tele. Actually, Steve played a Tele body with a Stratocaster neck. So he's kind of like playing both. Yeah, he always put a Strat neck on his Tele body and custom did a lot of stuff with the pickups. But what a tone Steve Morse would get through uh, the many things he would play through. And, uh, <laughs> A lot of country guys play Telecasters in today's country and yesterday's country. There's lots of Telecaster picking in there. Can I get a steel guitar tone a little bit? Number four on a guitar menu, Gibson SG. Uh, preferred guitar of lots of slide guitar players, including myself, and I'll tell you why. Because the neck on the SG is kind of pushed this way compared to most guitars. Here's your 12th fret, and down you can reach to this, to this area of the guitar really easy. Very easy to just to grab and go all the way down the neck, where a Les Paul and all that you're kind of doing like this. When you're playing slide, it's really hard to reach it. So, uh... <laughs> People play SGs that don't play slide. Angus Young, you know, he's always hit, hit one playing the SG, and uh, they're basically, uh, matter of fact, some of them are called Les Paul Juniors. They have a body style like this, and uh, a couple of the a couple of years Les Pauls actually look like this. So Les Paul Custom was this body shape, I think, in whatever year it was, but uh, became the Gibson SG with similar Les Paul type pickups in the same format of the toggle switch and the four knobs as a Les Paul, but it's a lot thinner. As you can see, it's a lot lighter than a Les Paul. And the, the neck is a lot more accessible. Like I say, you can see all the way down here. There's no problem at all. Play a slide or not, he's usually on a Gibson SG and uh, just a beloved guitar by many guitarists and a, and a beautiful instrument. This one happens to belong to my buddy Rusty Smith, 
as did all the guitars in this segment. Thank you, Rusty. And he didn't just let me use the guitars, he gave me the guitars for this segment, didn't you? <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow. Another guitar uh, used that we don't have with us today is a Gibson ES-335 or a Gibson ES of any kind, really. B.B. King plays one. Uh, uh, Toy Cobble played one almost exclusively later in his life. Elvin Bishop played one all the time. Big double cut hollow body Gibson. Thin hollow body and uh, two humbuckers. And they have their own distinct tone as well. And uh, being a hollow body, you can get a lot of feedback sometimes from them and, and sustain from it being a hollow body. And uh, there's Gibson ES-335s, there's 337s, there's different versions of, of those guitars. I never had noticed the one toy plays I thought was an ES-335, but it's a 330-something else with no F-holes. It's just like the one BB King plays in every way, except it doesn't have F-holes, which makes it the 330 whatever model it was. I can't, can't remember. But there, there's a few different versions of the 336 and all that that are basically the same guitar with different features, hollow body, double cutaway, humbuckers. And uh, so check one out. Now this is just some of the guitars used in Southern rock. And that doesn't mean that, that if you want to play guitar, you have to play these. You can play anything you want to really. It doesn't matter what kind of brand it is or, or, or how you tune it or anything. The good thing about guitar playing is you can invent your own thing. Nobody says there's rules of this or that. But that's just four of the main guitars that you hear on lots of records. It would be your Gibson Les Paul, your Fender Stratocaster, your Fender Telecaster, and your Gibson SG. Those four cover about anything that you might ever want to record in, in the best way. And, uh, Tried and true. Thanks for watching this episode of Southern Rock Insider. Please hit subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss a single episode. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please respond below or you can email us at southernrockinsider at gmail.com. This is your Southern Rock Insider, Chris Hicks, and thanks again for watching. Southern Rock.